Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of the resolution by the Minister of Finance to approve the amendment of the Health and Citizen Security Levy Order to amend Schedules 1, 2, and 3 of the Health and Citizen Security Levy Act as required by Section 17 of the Act. This Act, Mr. Speaker, was approved by this Honorable House at the last sitting of Parliament on July 11, 2023. At that sitting, the Minister for Finance provided the rationale and justification for the passage of the Health and Citizen Security Levy Act. Fellow parliamentarians were unanimous in supporting the Minister for Finance in passing this act as health and citizen security were identified as two strategic priority areas that have been under resourced in the past. And it is clear that effective measures required to implement strategies and policies in both health and citizen security must be supported by more resources, which the health and citizen security levy will provide. The amendments to the respective schedules are essentially to address some areas of oversight and hence my full support for this resolution. Mr. Speaker, the opposition continues to peddle for propaganda and mistruths about the levy. And we find ourselves in a situation where we have to engage in a constant battle to dispel these lies. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, when we counter with the facts, they peddle other mistruths which require us to further counter with facts. Mr. Speaker, it is clear that the government led by the Honorable Philip J. Pierre is delivering effectively on our mandate, including restoring economic growth, building a resilient economy, and providing more resources for our social services. This performance, Mr. Speaker, has now caused the opposition to shift to a mode that I have never seen in the history of this country. A rare form of desperation as they seek to regain power by whatever means necessary. They have abandoned the traditional style of pleading tearfully for restored confidence in their failed policies. This is why, Mr. Speaker, they have chosen to pursue the Cambridge Analytica approach. Our government must be on its guard at all times to respond to this incessant campaign of lies, rumor, and misinformation that will be peddled by the opposition more and more as we progress through the term. But Mr. Speaker, we are not going to be distracted. We are on a course to deliver to the people of this country, and despite the propaganda and the lies, we will climb to a higher altitude where we can deliver more effectively to the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, it is clear that the Honorable Member for Cassius East and Member for Finance, the Honorable Philip Joseph Pierre, continues to radically restructure our fiscal policies, involving a major revamping of our income tax structure to remove thousands of our citizens from the tax net and therefore will not be required to pay any income taxes. In addition, Tax amnesties and tax concessions have been provided to both individuals and businesses in an effort to stimulate investment, reduce the cost of building materials for housing, and to grant businesses waivers of penalties and interest on applicable taxes on condition that they make the payments by the stipulated deadline date. This can be aptly described, Mr. Speaker, as a revolution in fiscal policy that will position the economy on a higher growth trajectory, improve income distribution, increase employment, and reduce poverty. Any response by the opposition to those things are trying to insult the truth of our work and the progress that we are making. But we are not going into election mode prematurely. We are going to continue to govern whilst we continue 
to explain to the people of this country the measures that we are taking. And this is what is called effective politics, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we understand that no one likes to pay more taxes. This new levy needs to, however, be viewed within the context of the reduction in income taxes given to households, the substantial tax concessions given to households and businesses, and more importantly, the need to provide additional resources for health and security. This is the whole idea. As a matter of fact, everybody who does civic duty will contribute a small amount, but overall, more resources will come into the fiscal framework to allow us to provide for health and security more effectively. Mr. Speaker, we continue to hear the propaganda that the funds raised by the levy will not be used for health and security as it will be going into a general consolidated fund. Mr. Speaker, we have witnessed a major surge in projects undertaken for both health and citizen security, involving the re rehabilitation and building of police stations. And now we are about to start the major phase of the St. Jude's Hospital, one of the major priorities of our government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the opposition misled and continues to mislead the public on this important project. We are now in the process of not only commencing the construction of the St. Jude Hospital, but also funding has been made available for the rehabilitation of the Judge Odlum Stadium. The provision of this highly concessionary loan from the Saudi Fund for Development has made it possible for us to secure for the very first time, for the very first time, Mr. Speaker, funding for the completion of the St. Jude's Hospital and the rehabilitation of the Judge Odlum Stadium. This is what you call a dose ball, Mr. Speaker. And the opposition do not know, does not know what to do, Mr. Speaker. But we are going to remain sober and focus on the course that will bring the greatest benefits to the people of this country. And now the opposition thinking of the next election campaign as one of misinformation. But we are waiting, Mr. Speaker, and make no mistake, we are going to respond appropriately, not with misinformation, but with the facts. We hear the opposition, Mr. Speaker, now complaining about our government taking a loan to complete St. Jude Hospital. Can you imagine that? It is clear, Mr. Speaker, that the last administration did not have a clear financing plan to complete the box. That monstrosity and almost committed to the country, the country to an expensive loan through a design, finance, and construct, op construct option for over $70 million to complete the top floor only and to be repaid in one year with interest accruing at the rate of 1% per day for late payments. Mr. Speaker, they would have had to find additional monies to buy all the necessary equipment for the hospital. Mr. Speaker, this desperate desperation, this move by the former administration luckily failed to materialize as the general election was called. The rest, as we say, is history. This arrangement reminds me so much of the failed vaccination deal that the leader of the opposition spearheaded. In that case, we were not so lucky as the contract was signed and the government had already paid the money to Radical Investments Limited. Unlike the previous administration, Mr. Speaker, our government looks at the most cost-effective methods of financing our projects and programs. I will have an opportunity shortly to debate the resolution on the loan from the Saudi Development Fund. This will be a great day in the chamber, Mr. Speaker. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, I wish to lend my full support to the resolution by the Minister of Finance to approve the amendment of the Health and Citizen Security Levy Order to amend Schedules 1, 2, and 3 of the Health and Citizen Security Levy Act as required by Section 17 of the Act. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.